darted out from behind a tree and headed up over this direction. That's why I asked you to go up the hill that way. No, it was tall. Whitewater, a city of 14,000 that straddles Walworth and Jefferson counties. Nine square miles of neat, modest homes, better than average schools, and the University of Wisconsin Whitewater. On the surface, it's all Midwestern, middle class, mayonnaise mundaneness. So why would they call it the Second Salem? Could there be another Whitewater? A darker, more sinister side to this overgrown Mayberry RFD? Well, there certainly are stories. Stories of witches, ghastly spirits, and dark deeds. And then there's the book, ah yes, a book of nightmares kept under lock and key in the basement of, well, more on that later. The story seemed to start with Morris Pratt Institute, founded by Morris Pratt. Locals called it the Spook Academy. Morris Pratt. You're here, can you talk to us? Got this little red blinking light here in my hand on the DVR. Won't hurt you, but we'd love for you to talk into it. In 1888, Morris Pratt built the most expensive house in Whitewater, and he designed it as a temple and a school for spiritualism. The goal of spiritualism is to contact benign spirits so that mankind may benefit from their wisdom and protection in our mortal world. Nothing creepy about that, right? Pratt died in 1902, but that shouldn't slow down a good spiritualist. But Morris Pratt was rich. He was not a witch. His institute was devoted to contacting and communing with the departed. Just whose spirits were they contacting? What kinds of ethereal cross-connections were made? What supernatural doors and portals were opened? And did someone leave a portal open after turning out the lights? Yeah. It's, yeah. It just dropped down behind that tree. It's probably oh, yeah. on the other side. Yeah, you can see it right through the tree. It's, it's moving, stopping, and then it moves again. No, it would stop, and now, go, and now it's just gone. Faded out. No noise, nothing. It wasn't a helicopter hovering. That's what, because that's what it kind of looked like. Yeah, just a hover. But there were no light. flesh. It was just a really bright white light. Very many ghost stories about being her being seen in Hillside Cemetery, um, walking, and everyone that says when they go to follow her and her apparition disappears, it always disappears at the same place, and that's at the grave of Morris Pratt, who was the founder of the Pratt Institute, the first spiritualist college. I'm Kira. I am a sophomore at Whitewater, and I am pagan, um, spiritually eclectic, and also poly or polytheist, um, which means that I believe in more than one God, and that I take from different beliefs and ideas to kind of make my own. Uh, my grandma, I think, was the first one to say, it's all right. And she said it by, it was Thanksgiving, and she came over to me and she had like a chunk of turkey in her hand. And she goes, is this okay to eat? Can you eat meat? I was like, yes, yes, Grandma, I can't eat meat. I'm not a vegetarian just because I'm Buddhist. So, and then she laughed and then she's like, all right, well, I'm just gonna stuff you full of turkey then, so. If you draw lines on a map that connect the centers of the three cemeteries, the lines create an isosceles triangle. This is sometimes called the Witch's Triangle. Weird Wisconsin states, all buildings and the land along the triangle sides are said to be haunted. But that's not all. There are some Indian burial mounds also within the city limits. And if it is included on the burial ground map, the isosceles triangle is transformed into the image of a pyramid. Most of the stories said everything that's been inside that triangle has been most of the hauntings that's been going on all over Whitewater. So, so I mean, that was my experience where I heard that little girl, I would say, saying, what, I, what are you doing, like a whisper, and you just turn around, you're like, there's nobody there, so how do you explain something like that, you know? So We're actually the ones that are going to be shooting a film about the witches, actually, shooting a film next year. 
it's really? kind of a unique situation. We have a cemetery in the middle of the campus. Um, it's actually a city's jurisdiction, but um, sometimes when people are depressed, um, they'll go over there. We've had a couple of people go over there to attempt to the uh, suicide. Um, but uh, it's one of those interesting ones. They, get, they lock it during Halloween, that day only, but that's the only day. Tell us what tree you hung yourself from. Make you that sad they had to kill yourself. Girl. Is there maybe a. Uh, I got the name Pat killed in graveyard. And girl. Told me to run. Oh, really? Spirit radio. They told you to run. Yeah, it said run. I got an eye come in. Now, why aren't you running? I'm Matter of fact, why am I not running? That's okay. That's We're highly trained say. professionals, sir. Highly trained. <laughs> Spirit radio, the theory is uh, that they use the radio frequencies in AM or FM. It scans them at uh, different rates, uh, anywhere from 100 milliseconds to 350 milliseconds. And the spirits can link the radio frequencies and signals uh, to make sentences. Demon? Yeah. Is that unusual? Yeah. Yeah, normally you don't get any sort of demonic. Uh, activity on these, any words uh, referencing devil or demonic mommy? Here, I'm coming. Is that what I said? Yeah. And another thing that everyone asks me is, um, do you sacrifice goats? <laughs> Why would I even think to do that? Well, the whole belief is the majority of pagans, not all, Christians, yeah. for all, is that we do worship nature. Yeah. And why would I go out and kill something? Exactly. Exactly. You most, know? most pagans are against any form of hurting or killing or anything of that kind of sort. Yeah. Um, in Wicca, isn't there kind of the idea that anything you yes. like send out into the world keeps like three, like, yeah. Oh, three fold? Yeah. Three fold. Do what you will and harm ye not. Yes. Yeah. Um, there's something weird about the stone water tower in Sterren Park. Built in the late 1800s, witches were said to have performed rituals there. It certainly looks haunted. An iron fence guided the tower until 2004. Its barbed spikes pointed inward, as if trying to keep something in rather than out. It's one of the most haunted places. It's usually called the witch's tower because of a legend that on certain nights you can see hooded figures dancing around it. Uh, security barbed wire, the opposite way as it should be, is to keep the witches within the tower structure itself so that they cannot get out of this area. In Bowes, there is buried an oak altar that used to belong to the witch's coven that actually was believed to have taken over this little part of the city back around the turn of the century. Uh, supposedly the witches were up around the uh, Stair and Water Tower is where they usually met. My guess is they were probably KKK members. In the dark, the clo cloaks mm. would look similar. We know Whitewater had a strong KKK chapter back in the 1920s. The uh, county president of the KKK was found dead on the uh, lawn of the Methodist Church. It is an octagon? Yeah. Interesting. Especially with the, the whole witches thing. 1755 hours on October 11th, uh, it's United States Paranormal Research in Whitewater, Wisconsin, investigating the Whitewater Witches. When you land. Not tuck and roll. No, no. Well, tuck and roll is good. You got to spring a little when bit you of land. A little down. bounce in the okay. knees, otherwise you break stuff, and that's not good. Just watch it. It's coming up. Witch right there. Witch. Awesome. Yeah. It really said witch. It did. Yeah. As soon as we walked back up towards you guys, when, oh once my we got God. right in front of the tower. Now this is that's unbelievable. Witches are supposed to appear around the tower at night, right? Right. Sitting somewhere in the bowels of UW Whitewater's library is a book. It has a lock on its cover, and it's reportedly kept under lock and key. This is no ordinary book, nor is it light reading. Supposedly left behind by witches who conducted arcane rituals at the old water tower, anyone who reads the book commits suicide or goes hopelessly insane. Supposedly, the Book of Death recorded the names of people who were once involved with the witches' covens that were 
supposed to have run over Whitewater back in the 1800s. We have the locked book. The, one that, the only book we have that comes anywhere near the description of the book that could, will kill you if you open it. But it's a Catholic missal. So you promise if I open this book, or you open this book, we're not going to commit suicide? Not as far as I know. Close to the idea of there being, being ghosts in particular. Um, the spirituals certainly believed in them. You know, I've, I live in a house that's 150 years old. There are no, no, noises in the night that I don't know what's causing mm -hmm. them. Uh, I'm not going to go investigate them. He looks, he gets down in the shower, shuts it off. It's still going, the one next to him. He looks and he sees under the shower curtains there's a little gap and he sees a pair of like little kids rain boots. So he takes the shade, pulls it away and the water and the little boots disappear. The water stops. They have these things now called near-death experiences and people write about them and to me they're somewhat fascinating that people like a young boy who almost died and then he came back and he could see all these things. So is there something to that? Again, I don't know, but there could be. It's like the cemetery, and sometimes it'll be open, but it's supposed to have a lock on it. So I don't know who opens it, but it's supposed to be locked. You gonna go there at night? I'm not gonna go there at night. I mean, they wanted to go play Ouija board, and they said they were playing Ouija board in there, and it spelled out somebody's name, and when they like looked up their name, it was somebody that died like in the towers, that like fell out a window or something. We have uh, some student organizations that have done actual kind of rituals. Um, again, uh, we're on campus, so First Amendment rights, as long as they're not uh, killing animals in front of us or um, anything like that. Some of the Halloween shenanigans. So it's funny because a lot of times people think they're in costume, or they are in costume, so they think they can do um, things and be invisible. So um, when a French fry uh, does something and goes running, it's pretty easy to find the French fry, you know. Back in 1969 through 1971, I lived in Wells Hall, and the big thing among all the students was to do seances which was not permitted because you weren't permitted to burn candles, but what we did would be stuff a towel under the crack in the door so that the IRA couldn't see the candle burning. Well, the towel we had stuffed under the crack in the door had flung itself to the other side of the room, and that was the last seance I ever went to in Wells Hall. Supposedly done as a prank. Which is a sick prank, prank, yeah. But, prank. <laughs> it was but they dug up the <laughs> casket of a young girl and had put it out somewhere. I don't know if you, do you know where they had placed it at? It was at the tail end of the Vietnam War, so they associated it with protests. The protests, that's right. Yes. that's right. I'm Sarah. Um, I am a pagan, and I have my emphasis in those beliefs mainly in the Egyptian pantheon. I have two main goddesses that I worship, I suppose, and um, basically, other than that, I just draw from all sorts of other different spiritual beliefs and make my own thing out of it. We'll get people from Christian organizations giving us kind of like the weird, like, oh my god, you worship the devil look. Um, so just be understanding and keep an open mind. Um, we're not different from you guys at all. We're just, we're us. We're, we're people. <laughs> Treat people how you want to be treated. Judge people how you want to be judged. If you do not want to be judged, do not judge in return. Gosh, are there witches and ghosts? Um, I really don't know. I, I don't On a June 2008 morning, Rick Lean, Whitewater Water Superintendent, was checking out the water tower when he was attacked. The person that was in here at one time, his sole ambition was to rid the tower of the witches. And uh, open the door. Once I came in, I saw somebody here trying to crouch behind our control panel. And uh, once I could wrap my head around somebody being in here, I uh, got my cell phone out and I called the police department. And I was standing about, right about here. And just as I called the police department and walking in, he ran towards me head first 
right into my stomach and kind of knocked the wind out of me. My cell phone went flying before I was able to talk. So a fist fight ensued within here. All he wanted to do was get out. All I wanted to do was keep him here. So as we fought and um, throwing each other around in here, um, I was yelling at my cell phone because I could hear the police on the other end yelling what was going on and uh, I needed help. And so we fought and fought for about seven minutes, which seemed like an hour. And the police got here, both University and Whitewater Police. And by that time, I had climbed on top of him and had him pretty well subdued. Um, he tried to bit my thumb off. As a matter of fact, I thought he did. But um, uh, then the police came, took him, put him in his, uh, put him in the squad car. He had just watched the trailer for the film, which is Whitewater, and with his buddies the night before, and he wanted to rid the town of the witches. So that's why he came in here. Um, like I say, it's impossible to get in here. But what he ended up doing was getting inside the fence, climbing over when there's spikes on the top of it, and he crawled up the overflow pipe and the stone up until the top doorway right under the steel tank. He kicked that open, and if you, if you see up there, I don't know if you can see, there's some old rotten two by 12s up there that just sit across. He walked across those, which are not safe at all to walk across. <coughs> Excuse me. He came down here without a light. Um, and he had a eight inch blade knife and he started cutting all the wires, opened our control panel and started cutting all the wires to, uh, to the tower controls. Um, like I say, he wanted to rid this uh, town of the witches, but um, all of a sudden, after that interview in the back of the squad car, it was reported to me by a police officer that uh, all of a sudden he didn't remember a thing. It was just like, what's happening? You know, so. Um, so that was that. Um, I was injured and taken to the hospital by ambulance, um, but uh, uh, was able to resume my duties short after that. So, and that was all because of the witches here. So, yesterday, just to come up here, like I said, I'm up here every every morning. There was a young Asian gentleman standing over on the west side of this fence, and he was. Um, he was doing all kinds of uh, different things with his arms and it appeared to me that he was worshiping somehow or something or I have no idea. His eyes never uh, went off straight ahead and I, I never uh, approached him at all. I just let him do his thing. There's actual paranormal activity. It definitely would be a good sign. 0.4 or 0.5 is a good spike. And then the door will just open slowly or sometimes it'll just close randomly. Does that scare you? Uh, every now and then when it's really late at night. And you, you don't want to move? No, it'd be too much of a hassle. You like ghosts? Yeah. <laughs> On Halloween, I, I heard that witches go out, but I never, <laughs> I never seen any. Are you going to stay far away from there? I like to check it out. But <laughs> I think we're all, we're all going to be leaving this uh, this life and going, well, we're either going to die, 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 meaning it's all done, or there might be some life thereafter. When the time comes and when we meet in the great beyond, there's going to be a whole lot of people that we didn't suspect would be there, and a whole lot of people that we suspected <laughs> should be there are not going to yep. be there. We found out about this uh, paranormal investigation that Real Life TV is doing and we just thought we would ask if we could be a part of it. Are you moving it? No. Are you seriously? Wait, are you moving it? <laughs> if not you're not, then it's not funny. I'm not moving it. Alright, this is kind of creepy. 
Is there anyone who wants to talk to us? This is weird. Are you moving it? I'm not moving it. If you're moving it, I swear I'm going to stop. I'm, I'm not moving it. Can't you just, everybody, I feel like everyone can think of one time when they were younger and saw something that they couldn't explain. But when you get older, you're such a realist and you just don't want to think about things like that anymore. So it's like it gets lost on the young. I'm serious, this is freaking me out. Did you hear that? Yeah, I definitely hear footsteps. Has anyone, does anyone want to talk about something violent that happened here? Oh, come on. Are you what? serious? We're here. This is why we're here. We wanted to do this. You wanted yeah, to do this? Yeah, but is that the question you want to ask somebody who's talking to you from beyond the grave? Well, why not? Because that's not, I don't know. That's a scary question to ask them. Oh my gosh, my hands are like shaking. I'm so scared. <laughs> I... R fur? What? Maybe fire. Fire? Fire? Did you die in a fire? Did somebody start a fire that you died in? Of course I'm well, I didn't sure and you were really scared. Of course, I'm pulling it all over the place. <laughs> I really didn't know when you scared me. No, no I <laughs> I've been moving it all over the place. Cuando cantaba yo soñabas tú Tuve la gloria Don't be scared of anything that you don't know because you can picture it as something monstrous and really terrifying and a worse nightmare, but it's not a monster unless you figure it out yourself because it's probably not harmful, it's probably safe, and it's better just to investigate yourself than to be scared of the unknown.